Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Doesn't help. <laughs> doesn't help. Now, if you want to smear yourself with baby oil to facilitate <laughs> your interactions with Swedish women, that's a other <laughs> thing entirely. From the Asgard Company Studios in beautiful Wichita Falls, Texas, from the finest mind in the modern fitness industry, the one true voice in the strength and conditioning profession, the most important podcast on the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, starting Strength Radio. All right, welcome back <laughs> to Starting Strength Radio. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and apologize right now for my voice, but, you know, we can't all, we can't all have perfect health all the time. So if I hack and wheeze, I've got some COVID going on, and it's just, you know, or uh, if, you die on camera, if I die on camera, that'll serve me right, won't it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It'll serve me right. All that racism. Racism. Overt cam- racism. Especially off camera. Directed off at- camera racism. The stuff we say before we start recording this. Brown people in the studio. But brown people in the I studio and how stupid person. they are just because they're brown. You know. And everybody knows this too, right? Of course. Everybody already knows it. I can't say it. Nick can say it. But if I say it, it's racism. If he says it, it's funny. Right? God. <laughs> so, today's a call in show. We're going to let you guys call in. We're going to take the uh, unusual step of turning most of the content of the program today over to you. Now, this is a huge risk. It's a huge yep. risk. But we take it, we take it willingly because. Uh, well, really, because you haven't fucked it up too bad so far. Now, there'll come a time when you do, and we'll have to rethink this idea, but right now, we can deal with it. Right? But first, comments from the epididymis. No, no. Comments from the dish. No. Comments from the heaters. <laughs> oh, you forgot to do the reverb. Will you do it again? Give it to us again. Yeah. Ready? Here, with, Ready? The, with the reverb this time. Ready? Okay. Come. Much better. Yes, I like it better. Sometimes I, you know, even despite the fact that I'm hoarse, I can still do the reverb. Yeah, it's real boomy. Right. Last time I was this early, Rip was still a C cup. Sometimes I don't understand this. <laughs> All right. That was about, uh, I don't know what the hell that was about. All right. Here's one from a genius. Olympic lifters are always so smart. Oh, know. they're the best. They're the best. Because they're all high-level intellectuals. They are. It's the intellectuals barbell sport. So, in response to uh, learning the squat clean with Josh Wells, uh, M B lowercase M B says this is a power clean and front squat. Nothing about this is a squat clean. And for the love of God, if you want to learn Olympic lifts, don't look to starting strength. <laughs> reasonable. You know how many times Josh Wells has been to the fucking nationals? <laughs> The Olympic lifting nationals, USA weightlifting's nationals, five or six times. Yeah. He's certainly not qualified, though, because I don't know. 
All right, here's here's a guy that doesn't seem to understand anything we've ever said about anything. Kempton Bryan says, gonna have to disagree here. (laughs) (laughs) You can't grow calves, lateral deltoids, biceps, triceps, and rear deltoids that well with the four compounds. I like how we call them the four compounds. Right over the boy's head. (laughs) The four compounds. The four compounds. (laughs) Gonna have to disagree. (laughs) And that, of course, you know, completely destroys us. Destroyed. 350 pages of starting strength out the window. This must be for Nick. This is about uh, physical strength. Uh that monologue thing we did. This guy's never been to Nicaragua, but he's saying they ain't got no cities or internet over there. Ha 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 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get it help, wouldn't it? <laughs> Might make the monkey more tasty. <laughs> okay. So, are you sure we want to do this? Is this a good idea? I, Dealing with these fucking people? Now. Your idea, man. I was just sitting at home having a great time, and you said, let's do a live call-in. So, here we are. I do remember saying that. You got 11. Well, someone has to be responsible, so I guess. <clears throat> that's that true. You've got 11 adoring fans yeah. on the phone, on let's, hold. Let's see what we can do with them. Okay. All right. Who's going to go first? Uh, let's see. Let's see how long it takes them to figure out they're on the phone with us. All right. Oh, shit. No, I just hung no. up on everybody. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, yeah, folks. Because well, the, normally there's one ringy. Yeah, I, hit, I must have hit the wrong button. <coughs> all right, now. Oh, no, they're back. Here we all, go. All right, all back. There it there's is. There's one. There's the first one. All right. Hi there. Welcome to Starting Strength Radio. There you go. Uh, hi. My name's Travis. Travis. Is Travis's audio as bad as it sounds in my earphone? Yeah, sounds here? good on mine. Sounds fine on yours. I think it just overdrives this little shitty piece of equipment here. Yeah, big headphones would sound great. Yeah, but big headphones are stupid. He's got it? two of them on. Look at him. God he damn. has two pairs of <laughs> I've headphones. I've got two on, on right now. <laughs> All right, Travis, we're not going to show you a picture of Rusty with his two pairs of headphones on, so you just go ahead and ask your question. Well, I just want to let you know, uh, I called a few months ago, and I did break into Rogue. I got me some plates, and now I have 700 pounds worth of weights. Well, good. You broke into what? You told me to break into Rogue so that I could train for my shot putting and discus throwing. Oh, I remember this guy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, so, good. So what's going on? So <clears throat> how far have you thrown the shot so far? Uh, 50 feet. That's, 16 know, pounds. That's a start. That's a start. That's pretty good. It's further I, than I can throw the goddamn thing. I like how he t- actually took your advice and said, fuck it, I'll just learn how to throw. Yep. Well, I'm glad he did because it makes more sense. You know. So you having fun doing that? Oh, I love it. I I've, I've been throwing since high school. I medaled in state. So I didn't tell you to do anything you hadn't already done. You told them to get equipment. So my advice is essentially useless. No, you yeah. told them to go find equipment and lift. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, he already knew he should have done yeah, that. Yeah, that's why he called the show. Right. Well, all right, Travis. I'm glad we could help you, man. If, in fact, we did. Doesn't sound like we did, though. Are you just giving us an update, or do you have another question, Travis? No, that was it. I just wanted to give you an update. Uh, you, I know you mentioned about throwing uh, last call, and I just wanted to, wanted to give any listeners uh, just two names, John Powell and Brian Oldfield, if you want to learn how to throw. They're the best discus throwers and shot putters in the world. In fact, they are. How about Fuhrbach? You ever watch any of his stuff? I love Fuhrbach, 70-foot shot putting. Yeah, he's Al Fuhrbach. That was a human male. Now, now that was a male, in fact. All right, man, thanks for calling, Travis. Good luck with your training, man. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> Howdy, duty. Hello? Howdy, duty. I, that's, uh, you know. Everything's cool here. Uh, what are you doing? John. John, man. What's going on? Sean. 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 Isn't that Scottish for John? <laughs> Irish. Irish. All right. Not the same thing, I guess. Well, it's similar. Similar. Do they? I said Nicaraguan, I have no fucking idea. No, the Scottish and the Irish don't hate each other. That's what he said. No, no, you're thinking of the Greeks and the Turks. The Scottish and the Irish are their buddies. The Greeks and the Turks? The Greeks and the Turks hate each other. <laughs> the Turks have been at war with everybody. The Turks, ha- everybody hates the Turks, yeah. and the Turks hate everybody back. So, uh, Sean, what's what's going on? 
Hey, Mark. How's it going? Um, I had a programming question. Um, so last year I was deadlifting 500 pounds and mm -hmm. I got a hernia above my, like right above my belly button, my abdominals. It's not very major, but I got a uh, ultrasound done recently just because I'm concerned about it. And my doctor told me no more deadlifting. And uh, I wanted to know what your advice would be as far as programming goes, as far as um, leading up to the surgery and then after the surgery. I don't know how long we have to take off. Well, when is the surgery? I haven't booked it yet. So I am actually right now I am studying. I'm doing the online prep course to be a starting strength coach right. in Boston. And uh, I'm planning on taking a seminar in June. All so right. I don't have any pain right now. All right. Well, let me let me ask you a little bit about the injury. How big is the defect right now? It's it's pretty minor, but I do kind of feel it. Well, what? How many? How many? How big is the defect? I need a number. Uh, I don't. I haven't looked at the actual ultrasound, but it's probably like an inch, maybe. Well, uh. The idea that you can't deadlift is that's just doctor shit. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, people deadlift with these things all the time. It's a midline hernia. It's just, you know, it happens. You know, it's a rather common injury. It's not as big a problem as a, uh, especially at that size, as an inguinal hernia. And uh, I don't know that you got it during a deadlift. You may have had a weakness in the wall. I could feel it happen during the deadlift. You could feel it. You you could feel the 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 actual movement during the deadlift. Well, this is. I, I tell you what I would do. Uh, I, what I would do is. Uh, uh, what kind, what size belt are you wearing? Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, I try to train beltless as much as possible. Uh, I have an SPG it's, belt. It's, I don't. I think it might be. It, Sean, it's no longer possible. It's no longer possible for you to train without a belt. Okay, so if the if the injury is above superior to your navel, then it's going to be. It's not going to be covered by the belt. So this is what I think you should do. You need to get a three inch belt, and wear the three inch belt. And then you need to get a, uh, I would use a Velcro belt and I'd put the Velcro belt on above the, the three inch belt so that it covered the defect. And I would, I would deadlift with two belts and I would put the, I would, because you have to hold that thing together. Now, you could probably do this and have no trouble with it at all. But you're going to have to start wearing a belt. Yeah, I have a Velcro belt right now, um, and I've noticed it helps a lot. I was just curious, as far as programming goes, how would you... I would ignore it and, and train. I would ignore it and train. Uh, I don't know that I'd have it repaired. I don't know. I don't know that you ought to have surgery on it right now if it's only that big, and it doesn't. It doesn't grow. I mean, if it's if it progresses, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to fix it, and that'll be a mesh repair. But if you have a mesh repair on that thing, you're going to have to support it with a belt either way, whether it's repaired or not. You're gonna have to have a belt on, on top of that thing, so that it doesn't. Because if you've got a, if you got a mesh repair. Uh, over the defect and the thing spreads and spreads outside the mesh well you now you're in another surgery situation I, I the, if you're asking me what I would do if it was my midline hernia I would belt it and and go on that's what I would do this is not the same situation as an inguinal hernia and uh if if it was me, I would I would get used to wearing my three inch belt 
in the normal belt position, and I'd put a Velcro belt on top of the hernia and just train like there's nothing else wrong. That's what I would do. So a three-inch leather belt? Yeah. You know, like a belt, like a belt, belt, you know, like a like our starting strength belt from Dominion. I'm break now. It's time to break down and buy some equipment. Oh yeah, um, I'll uh, I'll definitely do that. All right. Uh, so just train as normal then. Just don't even. That's what I would do with the programming. That's right. Just add the equipment. Train as normal. Okay. All right, man. See you in June. All right. Let's move it roll right along. along. Move along. Moving along now. Howdy. Hello, Mr. Ripito. My name's Tyler. I'm calling from uh, the great state of Texas in the unfortunate city of Austin. Oh, Jesus Christ. You poor bastards. Are you from California or are you from actually from Texas? Uh, no, sir. I grew up in Virginia. Grew up in Virginia. Is, is this guy innocent or not? I can't. I can't say anything. I mean, I've only been here six years. Yeah, that's true. I'm not entirely. I'm opinionless. To opinion yet. Yeah. All right. Well, I think he's probably all right. I think so. He's too. not from California, right. so yeah, it's fine. All right. So, uh, but but this guy, Tyler here, is dealing with the side effects of California, even as we speak. Yep. In, In fact, fact, more so than if he was still in Virginia, probably. Oh God, yeah. yes. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. There's more. There's more Californians in Austin right now than there are in Virginia. Surely to yeah. God, that's true. Is that right, Tyler? Is that a? Uh, that that seems to be the case. I haven't done the. Okay, Tyler. So, what's your question here, man? Sure. So, um, I wanted to. I wanted to get your opinion. I mean, you know, since the United States went off the gold standard in 1971. Uh, the dollar has not been pegged to any hard money whatsoever. And right. I, I mean, as you know, there's the result. Um, the United States, anytime it's found itself in any problems like uh, liquidity events or like a war, uh, our country has just decided to rev up the currency machine and just print new dollars. And, you know, right. this was this was no more clear than 2008 when we bailed out the banks with 700 billion in stimulus. All right. those long years of, of QE where we printed twir- trillions and in 2020 where, you know, I think it was like 22% of all dollars were created in 2020. Um, yeah. My my question is, you know, with the $1.9 trillion in stimulus coming on uh, down the pipe, how does this end and is Bitcoin the answer? Uh, I am not comfortable with Bitcoin because I don't really understand it. Uh. I am the wrong guy to ask about Bitcoin. Uh, this whole question is very interesting. And uh, I remember a book that was written in 1992 uh, by a, a, a business guy that had a lot of clout at the time, and I can't remember his name, but it was called Bankruptcy 1994. And this guy postulated that uh, we were – in a liquidity situation back in the middle nineties and we'd printed too much money and everything was going to collapse and it didn't happen. It was, it was, it was, it just was completely missed the mark entirely. And I am a, right now I'm of the opinion that I, I just don't think we understand monetary theory because under normal, under normal, uh, conditions of, of, what would be considered monetary theory, if you just start printing money, that's inflationary. And we really haven't seen a significant amount of inflation yet, and we should have. If what we know about money is right, why haven't we seen, you know, tremendous inflation right now? We're, we've got the national debt up to $30 trillion right now. That's a meaningless number. The economy of the world is based on debt. It is not based on gold. It's based on numbers on a ledger line. That's all it's based on. And we're not operating in normal monetary theory anymore, and we haven't been for quite a while. 
So I don't know how uh, Bitcoin or, you know, cryptocurrencies like that, blockchain, I hear a lot about that. I, I don't know how that changes the effect. I mean, the, the situation at all, I'm completely, because I don't understand Bitcoin. I really do not understand it. I know it has gone up quite a bit. Damn thing's worth 50 grand right now. Isn't yep. It? Something to that effect. Yep. You got any ideas on this Bitcoin well, question? Because I, I don't know anything about it. It'd be it. nice if uh, your currency was backed by something tangible, but uh, it's I not think ever going. To I be. think we're well beyond that, and I don't well know. beyond that. And, and I think I think if the, if the, the dollar collapses, uh, everybody's fucked. And I don't know what uh, having bit uh, having Bitcoin would do for you in that instance. I, I don't if, know. If I, the I dollar the collapsed, everybody is fucked, and that is absolutely right. everybody. And, and that everything. is probably why the dollar is not going to collapse. Exactly. The yeah. big thing about Bitcoin is there's a limit to it. It's impossible for it to go up. Yeah, there's so scarcity at, with Bitcoin. Yeah, so, so, so the value. Well, there is right now. That, no, it's it's limited. Yeah, that, it it's is limited. It gets limited. It, it's it limited gets, right now. No, it's limited. They, it's, they, they, they cannot raise it. They can't. Really? It, yeah. it gets more and more complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it gets more and more complicated to mine, so to speak. Right. Yeah. The the closer you get to that limit, so it will have a limit, and that's why it's valuable. What do you uh, want to bet there'll be some more of it? Oh, well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> or there'll be a different. Uh, Another an alternate uh, an alternate to it. yeah but, I mean if because demand grows supply stays the same price will go up right and if yep. price goes up and there is a demand then there will be a way to fill that demand and it may not I be guess with another Bitcoin, with but another cryptocurrency sure sure yeah oh so, Mr Ripito I'd like to uh, put back push back just slightly on the fact that there's no inflation. I mean, we've seen. Oh, there's, you know, there's, there's periodic inflation. I understand that gas has gone up, you know, and there's, there's things that are going up, but I mean, right. It doesn't take a wheelbarrow full of money to buy a loaf of bread in the United States. There's still the same number of zeros on our dollars. I mean, hyperinflation is what happened in Zimbabwe and Venezuela and all that other shit. Uh, because they're not dealing with dollars. Yes, sir. Uh, the, the housing prices in the United States have skyrocketed. The price of yeah. education has certainly skyrocketed. Healthcare in this country has skyrocketed. And we're seeing a greater and greater amount right. of inequality that is happening between that. Well, and I, and I understand that, but I don't, I don't think you can... I don't think you can argue that uh, uh, increased prices for housing are inflationary. That's normal supply and demand. I mean, the po the population of the United States uh, since uh, the 1950s is is more than doubled, and they got to live someplace. And and places like California and the East Coast don't let you build new houses, and that does normal economic shit to the supply. Right. That's normal and the economic shit, supply, demand, price stuff. Uh, the federal government got into the education market, you know, when they nationalized the student loan program and uh, essentially created unlimited opportunities for people to borrow money to major in sociology. And then... Uh, you know, the, everybody decided, well, let's major in SOCH. Why not? You know? Communication. It's easy. There's no calculus. And I'll have a I'll have a college degree. It won't be worth anything, but I've been told I have to have a college degree right. or I'm not really a a finished human being. And so everybody jumped on that and the colleges and universities happily complied with this increased supply by Raising the price. The answer of, of like, well, the the, the, the increased supply, the increased supply of money to pay for it sure. by raising the price. The response to uh, is bit is Bitcoin the answer or what the solution is? Like, I, I, yeah, it's just way too complicated right now. But, but I mean, there's some. I think there's some shit that's a good idea to do. Like, I, I don't think there's anything wrong. I think you should have some Bitcoin. Uh, it's expect to to see wild fluctuations in the price of that thing. But why not have some? Once it gets widely adopted, um, it becomes way more valuable, and I think people will be way more comfortable with it. Uh, but it, 
there's stuff that that you should have uh, that can't be taken away from you, right? If there's a, if the internet goes down, power goes down, your Bitcoin's not worth shit either, right? right. Who's gonna, how can you even take Bitcoin from somebody? Well, you can. Um, y- you actually are supposed to download your Bitcoin to a digital wallet, yeah, of course. And so that's course, always but, yours. But you don't have, electrons. But you don't have power. How it's, am I going to give you my? How am I going to give you my Bitcoin? Yeah. Well, you know. Well, my yeah. point is, my point is that things like land, ammo, yes. water are always going to be universal silver, currencies. Silver, gold. Silver and gold, but even silver and gold, what the fuck is Nobody's the use of silver and gold starving. When, yeah. when everybody's starving? You know? Well, now, if somebody's willing to sell you a five-gallon bucket of wheat for an ounce of, of silver, course. Of course. Yep. silver's value. Sure, sure. You know, it just depends on the way people are willing to, willing to, yep. to place value in things right. at that point. Uh, the... Uh, you know, and I, you know, it, it, with respect to this this topic, uh, what about the GameStop situation? You know, it's a fucking mess, is what it. What is. a fucking mess! <laughs> you know, we were about. It, we want to play when the Federal Reserve when the Federal Reserve is printing off all of this money and is giving it into the pockets of people. Um, it all this money is looking for a home. It's looking for different stores of value. And as people are hopping around from asset price to asset price to different, you know, stock bonds, mutual funds, real estate, now people are playing the stock market like it's a casino. And well, this is uh, only going to continue. You, you, you made an interesting thing. statement right then. Money is looking for a store. Money is supposed to be a storehouse of value. That's what it's supposed right. to be. That's, that's its function, is a place where you put value. That is liquid. That's easily that's easily exchanged, so we can do something with it. If you're printing money, and it doesn't have any value until you buy something with it, that's what happened when you went off the gold standard, isn't it? That's right. You know, it's uh, pretty. So that's where Bitcoin comes in. It's a supply cap. There only be twenty one million ever, and no more can ever be created. And as we can see, it's currently being monetized we're at 50,000 we'll likely see 100,000 before the end of the year and uh there's, go, there's gonna be right. a point that, you know there's, what's there's gonna be a what, point though that when the government decides to step in on cryptocurrency and start to trying to um, regulate it and it will it will it will completely fuck up cryptocurrency well let me let me point something else out that's real critically important right here how do you obtain bitcoin you can mine it. You can, um, you can work for it. You can buy it off an exchange. And what do you pay for it with? Cash. Dollars. Right. Dollars. So we're back to dollars. Right? We're back to dollars. Well, right right now we are. But right if, now, if I, if I just started still to take, back to dollars. If I decided to start taking Bitcoin from I'm my currency services. I'm, arguing, I'm not arguing it's a currency currently. I'm saying right. it's an emerging store of value. Exactly. Yeah. Right. right. And in, in, in any any expert on crypto, um, I've been watching a whole of, a lot of videos about this. They they talk about cri- the whole point of crypto is to get away from paper money. That's right. the whole point of crypto. But people are treating it as, oh, I'm going to buy some Bitcoin and then sell it and then buy and sell. They're treating and it make as, dollars with they, it. They're trying to make dollars with it. But the whole point of crypto and the reason why the whole point of it being invented was to get away from paper money and not have regulation with it, right. at least government regulations. Well, I understand uh, the. Uh, the desire for everybody to to go somewhere that makes them more comfortable. You know, the dollar makes a lot of people uncomfortable. And it should make everybody. I mean, if you just yeah. create 1.9 trillion of the goddamn things out of thin air, because the Speaker of the House of Representatives decides that that's what we need to fucking do, well, in a, in a sane universe, that would be inflationary. And I mean hyperinflationary, right. but that hasn't happened. What we've seen is is what would be is normal inflation. Yep. You know. But and we're seeing we're using the measuring stick as the dollar. If we measure it in, within Bitcoin terms, we're seeing that all of these assets, stocks, bonds, real estate, they're all crashing in Bitcoin terms, but in dollars they're appreciating. If we it just depends on what are we're using as our measuring stick. Right. Yeah, probably right. You know, this is a, the only thing that is certain about 
the next four years is that lots and lots of shit is going to be different in 2024. Lots and lots and lots of shit is going to be different. And uh, I have no idea what the hell's going on now. None of this has made the slightest bit of sense for the past year. Nothing has made any goddamn sense. Everything, essentially, you hear is a bald-faced lie, and everybody's fine with pretending it's not, and it's just, this is the, I don't know. I hadn't got a yardstick here, Tyler, but I do appreciate your call. Okay. Now, that was rather deep, wasn't it? That's a good one. That's pretty good. All right, let's go forward here. Hey. Coach Ripito, my name's Aaron. Good to talk to you, man. Hi, Aaron. How are you? I'm doing all right. I don't have any uh, smart Milton Friedman shit to say like the last caller, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I would like to ask about my squats. I've been uh, doing novice linear, pro- novice linear progression for mm-hmm. past two months and uh, making good gains on bench press, deadlift, and squats, and uh, strict press. And uh, I've noticed I've been setting up my iPhone camera behind me here lately to watch my squats. I've noticed uh, doing low bar squats that I start off with the bar level, and when I go down to the bottom, the bar gets a little cattywampus. It starts leaning a little bit, dipping a little bit to the left, Um, straightens back out when I come up. I can't figure out what I'm doing that's causing that. I thought you might have uh, some tips. Well, nine times out of ten, you're dropping an elbow. You're dropping your left elbow is probably what's – there's a certain amount of shoulder extension required to hold the bar up. Now, a lot of people take too wide a grip and uh, are at that point dependent on shoulder extension to hold up the bar. Uh, A certain amount of shoulder extension, as I said, is, is obviously necessary to keep the bar in position, but if you have too wide a grip and uh, at the bottom of the squat, an elbow drops, that side of the bar is going to go down. And then you get back up to the top and lock the thing out and return to a normal upright position and your elbow comes back up where it's supposed to be, uh, you know, that, that would describe what you're telling me you're doing without seeing a video. So what I would have you do just over the phone here without seeing a video is I would have you check your grip width. And I want you to make sure that you're using the narrowest grip that you can use with a neutral wrist. It's supposed to be tight. It's not supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to be tight. And if you do it like that, you don't have to hold your elbow up in shoulder extension. The forearm is supposed to support the bar. All right. And if you're having to use a bunch of shoulder extension to do it, And your wrist is bent into extension and stuff. Not only are you going to have a certain amount of instability at the bottom of the squat, but you're going to eventually develop golfer's elbow on that side. And uh, so I would would just uh, look at your video, check your grip width, see if you're dropping an elbow. And if you are, you're going to fix that by narrowing the grip, making sure that the bar is not too low on your back, when you start and uh, tightening all of that stuff up with your elbows motionless during the movement, okay? And you and you like the elbows uh, not straight down, but just a little bit right. like, tilted up. Am I right. correct? Right, right. Yeah, we've got stuff on the website about this. Just look at it, okay? All right, thank you, man. Bye, bye. Isn't it time for a commercial break? What Wait, should we, we do a commercial we for? We don't have commercials. We can make one. We ought to make a commercial for these shirts. 
Are these selling? Yeah, right. How many have we sold? Million. Five or six? 20. 20 of them? Really? 20. Man, they're flying out the door, aren't they? <laughs> is it the most popular shirt right now? No. Which one is? Which is the black one? <laughs> black. Yeah. Just join the fight. The join the fight against. Yes, join. What, join the what, fight against muscular. What hands. word can't you say? Atrophy. Black. No atrophy. She can't say atrophy. She said black. But she's white. If she says black, that's racist. Well, she doesn't realize that. She doesn't see color. She's Rip. colorblind. Yeah. You can't have that. But she can't say atrophy. You can't have colorblindness anymore. <laughs> atrophy. Because you're not acknowledging. Hold it. You, you mean you can't say atrophy because you hey. can't pronounce it? Atrophy. Say that again. Atrophy. See, she can't. Literally, can't say the word. Well, that's odd. Is there a neurological problem you've got? Or, hmm. Okay. Well, have anyway. you tried being less white yet? <clears throat> Me? Yeah. Have you I'm tried pink. that? I'm not white. Oh, I've already got that solved. That's true, actually. Yeah. It's true. I don't have white privilege. I've got pink privilege. <laughs> Everybody knows this. What the hell do you think this is all about? <laughs> Ask me a question like that. <laughs> Racist piece of shit. There's way anyway, less. Anyway, here's our commercial. Buy a shirt. <laughs> okay? There's way less pink people than brown people in That's the world. That's true. It's very true. That's true. I am a minority. Way less white people than brown people, too, right? It's got to be. Oh, yeah. It's got to sure, be. Sure, sure. A distinct minority. Yeah. Just this country is mostly white people. Right. Tiny minority of pink people. <laughs> tiny, tiny minority. It's like seven. You, no. Brent Carter, and like five other dudes. We need some government program. <laughs> yeah, right. right? <laughs> Better than that, reparations. Yes. Yep. Pink reparations. I could get 25 <laughs> grand. <laughs> That's the number? <laughs> I, I, I've heard it kicked around. You 25 know. grand. 25 grand. Really? Why not? I'm pink. Shit, you don't think it's in a handicap? No, I think that's fine for a pink guy. It's just a very specific it's number. It's very, yeah. No, 25,412 is a specific number. Is that the number now? No. no. So he's just giving you an example grand? of a specific number. I like round number. numbers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Big government payments need to be in round, round numbers. numbers. Less like that $600 check they yeah. gave me a couple of months ago. You, you got one? Nice. Yeah. I got a six hundred dollar check. That's awesome. I hadn't cashed it yet, but I've <laughs> like you, know, you got a paper I'm just check. Passing, yeah. They still a mail they check. mail paper checks to people. Yeah, mine was still? you mine didn't was get one? Like it just went into my bank account. No, they sent it to the gym. <laughs> in an envelope. Yes. It's twenty twenty one, man. I look, I didn't send it, they sent it. <laughs> it's not my fault that it didn't go right into my checking account. <laughs> I got to check. Like, what the fuck do I do with this thing? Yeah. You don't know how to what do you do negotiate with the check? checks yeah, anymore. Yeah, I don't know what you do with it. So you've moved into so the just, realm of digital. You just take a piece of paper somewhere and you say, here's some money that's on this piece of paper. And then they say, all right, sir, you now have. But then then what happens? Then it disappears in the digital world anyway, right? Well, you quit acting stupid. <laughs> God, God money. You know how much time you're wasting here acting stupid? All right, go ahead. <laughs> Come on. There, there we go. There we go. Hello. 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 This is Barry Charles. Barry Charles. Sounds familiar. Barry's in Albuquerque. In a great state in New Mexico. How are you enjoying your governor over there? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not in New Mexico, but if I dare tell you where I am, you, you'll uh, – You'll shame our geography. Well, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in Virginia. Yeah, I think you'd mentioned something about that being in Virginia. Yeah. I guess it's better to be from New Mexico than in New Mexico, right now. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I lived there uh, for better part of thirty years, um, and yeah, yeah, it's a well. We've had that conversation. Well, is that silly bitch uh, uh, <laughs> removed the 
quarantine, the 14 day thing yet? Uh, I know. I, I don't know what the pressures are. I talked to, uh, you, you know, some of my base back there. Right. Uh, and they're thinking, they're anticipating things getting worse, not better. Good. Good for New Mexico. They need to be worse, not better. I mean, this is just a giant experiment to see how shitty you can make New Mexico, I guess. It's a... You know, I haven't I haven't gotten out of the car. I drive through there all the time, uh, going up to our place in Colorado, and I haven't gotten out of the car to spend a dime in New Mexico. The only thing I do is I'll take a piss. And uh, I, we I, had I to stop and get gas. We were we were uh, a month ago. I, I'm just not going to do business with them. A month ago, it was snowing, so we had to get gas. We stopped, Did you? and some little town, uh, you know, I mean. Two gas stations, no stoplights. Right on the highway, we stopped. This guy is by himself. the The employee at the gas station is by himself, and he's got floor to ceiling three mil tape or three mil plastic floor to ceiling duct taped, and he's yeah. cut a little window out so that people can hand him their cards or whatever through the thing. Right, and then they've got all the fixtures and furniture pushed to the back of the gas station, so you you can't even you can't buy anything. You know, they don't want anybody in there. So you go you in. You can't buy anything. Well, you can pay for your gas. In a store. You can go pee or whatever. But this guy's, like, hiding in this little plastic bubble. Wow. In and, a he's, t- and he's still there. Never left. That makes for a God. That makes for a thriving economic situation. Man. Doesn't it? In a state that's primarily dependent on tourism. Yeah, and, and the, the billboards know. through the whole state, we're in this together. We're in mask this up for for we're your... in this together, and it and what they're in together is a mass grave. Oh man, it's amazing, just absolutely amazing. Weird. So, uh, Barry, God help you, man. You're in Virginia though. So what? And, and Virginia is a shithole too. I mean, all those government employees and shit. <laughs> yes, and I'm in the northern Virginia yes. area. Uh, I, yes. uh, I don't uh, know DC what's worse. Area. <laughs> But, but oh, I'm not. I, I don't live here permanent. I just it's a work assignment, and right. I, I actually I live in uh, Wisconsin. That's uh, more my residence. Right. So it's a complicated thing. But but yeah, it sounds like it fucking is. Yeah. yeah it, well, it, it, it is. But it was supposed to be good. Uh, it, all, it was all worked out until COVID hit, and then uh, it kind of the the whole plan fell apart. But yeah, no, I still have a lot of bitterness. Uh, about that, but yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, that's an excellent question, isn't it? I, I, um, you know, yeah, it's a good question, and and as, as you know, I have some uh, uh, surprising medical uh, things, and that's on top of it. But uh, co- the effects of COVID were n- were were not worse, uh, and were not better. The effects of COVID were just as bad, and uh, that that's the truth. So, you know, medical stuff you can deal with because you know what to deal with. But COVID, yeah. we're still, we're still, we still don't know. We still don't know. What are we supposed to do? I'll do that. Well, we know quite a bit. We we know quite a bit about it. We know that uh, we know that ivermectin works real well. We know that hydroxychloroquine works real well. We know all kinds of ways to treat it. What we don't know is about this fucking vaccine. Now, do we? No, no. no. Right. And we, we, you know, there's, there's a lot, a lot in that category. Mm-hmm. Um, it's better safe than sorry. I, right. uh, you know, right. I don't see, I don't see the science in that myself, but that's what we're told. Right. So what's going on? Yeah. So, uh, so this is my burning question. Um, when you lift heavy uh, and you fail a rep, you fail it generally at a point within the rep. I mean, you get no credit for the rep, right? right? But you, it did fail at some point, some instant in that rep. And I'm wondering, not at elite level, obviously, and, and also obviously we are trying to get stronger. That is the goal. Mm-hmm. But does the rep fail because of technique, or does it be called fail because of strength? And, and 
what should you pay attention to first? Well, it fails because of the ability to produce sufficient force to keep the bar moving. Now, that could be uh, one of several reasons. Your form could have deteriorated to the point. In other words, your positioning within the kinetic chain could have deteriorated to the to the point where insufficient force could be produced to keep the bar moving. Let's say the bar gets forward on the way up, and you create a longer than manageable moment arm between your base of support, midfoot, and the barbell. Now, were you able to keep the bar in position and minimize that moment arm, you might have finished the rip. But the positioning... Uh, was disadvantageous enough to you that you were unable to generate sufficient force to operate the moment arm in this disadvantageous position. Or you could be doing the fifth rep of a set of five in the correct position, everything, everything correct, and you just fatigued to the point where even in a correct position, Sufficient force was unavailable to make the bar keep moving. I mean, you know, it could have been could be two or three different things. Do, do coaches generally are they able to see that? Uh, is that pretty obvious? You say, well, you just you you know you got out of position. Yeah, I mean, good coaches can see that. Sure, good coaches can see that. Sure. You know, that's that's a function of a coach is to be able to tell you what was wrong and how to fix it, right? What was wrong and how to fix it is the role of the coach, especially in a, in a situation where you're in a max force production context. You've, if, if something's wrong, you know, you need to be able to get corrected so you can do it better next time. If nothing's wrong, you need to know that too. But, yes, that's the function of the coach. Right. Because, you, know, um, uh, you know, I've been thinking about it some, and um, pressing, pressing tends to stick not at the bottom. I mean, it, it, if you can't lift something, you can't lift it all the way. It can, mm. You know, you can't lift infinite either. Yeah. Um, I get that. But, but it's generally you get it going and then it fails, whereas right. deadlift, uh, uh, can fail, you know, at least for a lot of people, I think, can fail anywhere, anywhere from the from the bottom all the way up, um, and, and sometimes it's different. And so, whereas the press, pressing, you get that sticking point, and it just it just it ain't going up. Right, and you know, ninety nine times out of a hundred, you're going to miss a press because the distance between the shoulder and the bar got too long. And that, that moment arm becomes an insurmountable thing to, to move, you know, and there's, there's several ways that happens. And there are, there are three ways that happens. Uh, you can push the bar forward. You can push yourself back, right? Or you can fail to hold yourself under the bar. Okay, so most of the time when you miss a press, you will not miss it off the shoulders in the starch. You'll get it moving, and then it just sticks on the way up. Now, a deadlift, I've, you occasionally will see a deadlift missed at the top above the knees in the middle of the thighs, and 99% of the time when that happens, you're losing your grip. Because the easy part of the deadlift is the top 20% of the range of motion, right? And if you can't pull it through that, you're, you're, it's coming out of your hands. And that's why you miss it up there. You can miss a squat for about 95 different reasons, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, it's always a, a squat always, uh, I find amazing that it comes, comes out of the bottom. But yeah. yeah. 
tends to not fail. I, I mean, I've seen people fail horrifically. I'm sure. I'm sure everyone everyone has at the bottom, but generally right. it starts to come up, and then you, you can't complete it. Right. Yeah, for several. Usually, most people that miss a squat like that, you know, a third of the way up, have gotten it out of position. Have gotten it forward. The bar has gone forward. That's that's usually why that happens. And uh, it's just failure to hold the thing in the line. But, again, all three of these things, uh, sometimes you fail them because you're just not fucking strong enough. And that's <laughs> even if you were in the right position, you just didn't produce enough force uh, against the bar at that point in the range of motion. Okay. And, and right. my, my adjunct question to all that, if you have another moment. Yeah. Um, is on on micro loading, which which I, of course I've been doing. Um, there's a point of diminishing returns on micro loading, uh, li- literally, but but pra- pragmatically, especially in commercial gyms. Um, uh, the 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 resolution of the accuracy of the weight is, is, isn't you know it's not getting better than the pound level. No, that's true. You know, micro load loading ridiculous micro loading is real useful in your gym at home because you got the same plates on the bar every time and you're actually going up a pound and a half at a commercial gym unless it's an unusual commercial gym you don't know how much you're going up you have no fine control over that you don't you just don't know and uh you know, I don't know that there's any point uh, for most people. For example, micro let's say micro loading a deadlift. You know, once you're up in the five hundreds. You know, is there really a point going up two pounds on five forty? You know, and when we get into situations like that, this is we address that by varying the programming, and that's when you start doing weekly and monthly programming when you're that strong. So that you're not relying on microloading, because you're not dealing with this like a novice would be. You're not able to go up every workout anyway, right? And so when we get up in into that levels into those levels of strength, we're using programming instead of microloading, and that's probably the better way to think about it. Yeah, that that that's actually that's that, that's excellent. Thank, thank thank you very much. Sure. All right, man. Thanks for calling. Ready? Go. All right. Next in line is you, and you are. Hey, what's up, Mark? This is Sam. Call from Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, hey Sam. Sam. What's happening? Uh, not much. I wanted to say thank you. Uh, just discovered starting strength about a year ago, and uh, coming from a college football background, I wanted to get my numbers up, and um, took my press from one ninety five to two thirty five, and now I'm trying to put 40, 50 pounds on my squat when we get up to 500 pound squat. Excellent. Excellent job. So what's happening? Um, you know, I'm a taller guy. I'm six foot seven. So squatting is a little bit more difficult for me. Six foot seven. Is there not anything you can do about that? <laughs> have you considered surgery? I uh, have not. Well, something to think about. There's some perks to it. Yeah. Something to think about. To, there's perks to being six seven. How do you fit in a shower? What, yeah. What, what perks are there to being six seven? You can't you, drive. You can't a drive car. a cool car. You know. You can't you, get in a shower. You got an SUV. You're condemned to SUVs. Right. You get a you get a big pickup, I guess. But you know, you can't drive a Porsche. No. How do you live with yourself? <laughs> you can't knowing you'll never own. <laughs> A Porsche. I don't know. I couldn't do it. I'm happy being five eight. <laughs> Eleven inches shorter than you, and I'm happier than you are. Think about that. Well, I, I don't know. I didn't play. You probably played college ball, didn't you? He did college football. College football. See, I never got a chance to do that. Think of the girls. Man. Man. What a deal that would have been. Yeah. Yeah. Was, Way more girls in a so, radio, I'd rather have the a radio DJ or a 
whatever the fuck you did in college. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I did my share of damage. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> what's your question today? Um, yeah, my question is, so I saw that video you posted a while back about shoulder pressing three, four times a week to really bump mm-hmm. up your press. Right. And that helped me immensely. And you also said in that video to do singles, doubles, triples, and fives. To stay away right. from doing sets of eight or ten. Yeah, that's, the reps don't work for presses. They really don't. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, six, seven, long arms. I was pretty proud to get two plate right. press, 235 press now. Oh, that's a pretty good press. What's your body weight? Um, 275 right now. Okay. Good man. Six, yeah. seven, six, seven, two seventy-five. What a specimen! Yeah, this guy must be. What'd you and play? Right He's got kids blocks. all over Atlanta. You know he does. <laughs> <laughs> what position did you play? Uh, I was a left guard, left tackle. I used to be three twenty-five. What did you squat? Here's an interesting question. What did you squat? Did, where'd you play? Can you tell us? Uh, uh, Boston College. What, uh, what'd you squat when you were playing football? We we only did the front squat. <laughs> did you de- oh, did you deadlift? Uh, trap bar deadlift. No, uh, uh, isn't that genius great, man? College level coaches. Six seven. They're all they've been stupid. This for six seven three thirty or whatever, and six seven three twenty five. Touch a deadlift. He could have been a, a seven fifty deadlifter accidentally. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I. I you know. Yeah, you know, we were doing 20 rep sets on the leg press, stuff like that. Fuck. <laughs> That's amazing. How long has this been? Um, I got out. I'm 25 now, so I got out. Oh, it's just been – it's in the modern the modern era. See, yeah. it, and it hadn't improved a bit. That's the same programming you, you, my, my high school kids are doing, and they're all fucked up over it. Yeah, all of, of course. Knees are hurting. Of course their Backs knees are, are hurting. hurting. Backs are hurting. Yeah, I know. And it's just – you see why – I have said so many times that the worst strength and conditioning coaches are always found at high level schools. Yeah. And high schools don't even count as strength and conditioning coaches. Well, the the high schools see what the high level yeah, colleges are I doing know. and just copy it. Right. Oh, let's do the Boston College program here at Ryder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do that. That's perfectly, perfectly logical. All right, what, Sam. So, what'd you start your uh, your program at a year ago when you started this? What was your first day squat? Do you remember? Um, you know, four hundred five for set of five. Nice. Yeah, that's good. pretty cool. And what are you squatting now? My best front squat in college was uh, three fifty for a double. Right. Which is a decent front squat. Yeah. But what's your what are you squatting now? Um, most of our squad is 455. It, it flew up. I tried five plates and it, it kind of crumpled me. So you're stronger now than you were in college. I mean, quite a bit, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, how can we help you today? Um, you know, those, those simple tips about pressing multiple times a week, doing doubles, triples, fives. You know, helped me a lot with the press. I was wondering if you had any similar advice with, with a squat. I tried doing the small lob squat program. It just kind of hurt my hips and ankles. What was the last time – what was your last squat workout? Tell me what you did on your last squat workout. Um, let's see, I warmed up. I did 405 for a triple, 455 for a single, and then I tried five plates and then stopped. Well, I'm talking about the last training session, not the last fucking around session. What was the last – training you did i did front squats you're sam you're not doing the fucking program yeah sam you just need to you just need to get on a on the just get on most the program. basic program and start it and start start at 405 add five pounds three sets of five and you'll i mean you'll be squatting 450 in a month for three sets of five and then you won't stop until you're no close you'll be to up five. in the high fives yeah <clears throat> and back up to 300 pounds. Yep. At your age. Uh but you you're just you're just you're not uh approaching this correctly. You're not ready to be testing one rep maxes. It's, you need to go back to 405 and do three sets of five across, rest about 10 minutes between the sets 
And then the next workout, you need to go to 410. And then 415 right. and 420 and 425 until you're up in the fives. And you'll be up in the fives doing three sets of five across before this thing slows down. Don't confuse your experience uh, in the weight room and with sports as uh, as, as not being a novice anymore. So I assume right. you have the book or you've you've uh, seen our stuff, but you you fall squarely into the novice category at yes. least for the squat and deadlift. You know your press is uh, probably if you're doing four days a week week press it, pressing it's it's a little bit more advanced. But for squat deadlift, no, just no, no, run no. the program. Well, like Fox Brian Fox took his novice linear progression up into the mid fives Jesus. three sets of five across wow at a body weight of 250 at a body weight of 215 yeah all right and uh so i mean you're you're going to be a strong novice but you're still a novice right and any deviation from the standard approach 5 pounds of workout is going to be a mistake for quite some time you haven't exhausted the five workout, the five pound of workout potential here. Yeah, I've never, I've never done the linear progression. Yeah, well, that's go, what you need to go do. Go for it. Nothing else, to, nothing else to do but the linear progression. Yep. All right. I'll give it a shot. Okay, Sam. Thanks for calling. All right. Man, that's gonna be cool. Yeah, he's a, be a big, strong big, sucker, strong won't you? Yeah, big three hundred and fifteen pounds, six foot seven monster, kids all over that, <laughs> <laughs> and surrounding areas, and the surrounding <laughs> surrounding countryside. <laughs> yes, ready for another one? Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay. No. Hey. Got I'm asthmatic. Hello. Who's this? <laughs> Hello? So am I. So. Yeah, I, I just walked into a Target, so they're trying to mask me up. Well, you oh, just nice. walked into the Target while we're on a... <laughs> well, well, I've what, been waiting for an hour. Get where you can talk. <laughs> what right? they say when you told them you're asthmatic? They just say okay? They just kind of look at me. Yeah, yeah that's what they'll do. Nobody will say anything to they you. They were like... Oh, Nobody will say hard. anything to you. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't got the balls. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for answering my call. Well, um, talk to us. Uh, yes. I'm a personal trainer, and i um, training this guy. He's an ex. Uh, he played Major League Baseball, and I only have an hour with him at a time. So I try. I still feel like I'm rushing it. I'm just wondering if you know the best way to utilize that hour when I'm training strength with this guy, and we're doing the yeah. NLP three days. Three days a week. All right. This is. Yeah. All right. So you're going to, you're training him on a novice linear progression. All right. Here's the best way for one hour. All right. Now we'll listen carefully. All right. You're going to, you're going to warm up his squats. Okay. And then you're going to do the first work set of squats. And then you're going to start after that first work set of squats. He's got a rest when he's. Between that and the next work set. So that's when you're going to warm up his press or his bench, whatever he's doing that day. You're going to do half of the warm ups on the press or the bench. What's that? During that rest time for the squat? Yes. Yes. That constant. So the warm ups for the bench or the press are the rest time for the squats. So you're going to do half the warm ups, and then he's going to do a second work set of squats. Then you're going to do the rest of the warm-ups for the, for the presses. Then he's going to do his third work set for the squats. And then he's going to rest five minutes. And then he's going to do the first work set of the presses. Press or bench, right? And then you're going to start warming up his deadlift. And you'll do half of the warm-ups on the deadlift. And then you're going to do the presses, the second work set of the presses, bench press, you're going to do the last warm-up on the deadlift. You're going to do his last work set of the press or bench. You're going to rest five minutes, and then you're going to have, do his one heavy set of five deadlifts, and then he's done. And you can easily do that in an hour. All right. 
should I still be switching the push and the pull up? I mean, excuse me, the push and the pull. Keep switching those to bench and power clean. Dude, we don't do push pull. There's no such thing as push pull. The, the push, like for the, well, I'm, I'm probably not using the right vocabulary, but I changed the bench and overhead, and then it's a deadlift and power thing. I should still keep switching those. Yeah. Yeah, yep. you should. Keep all So, them. yeah, the, the pulls off the floor are the last exercises. So one day it's power clean, one day it's, it's deadlift, right? Those keep alternating, but the, but what I'm putting the whole point here is is that you are going to do the warm-ups for the next exercise in between the work sets for the one you're doing now. And that's how you get all of the work done in an hour, which was the question. Yes. Okay. That's how it's done. Good luck with your asthma. I've got it too, man. Well, thank you, Mr. Ripito. <laughs> All right. Later, man. All right. Yeah, it sounded like you ran a mile before he called us. He got all winded walking into Target. Well, he didn't get winded. He's just aggravated. <laughs> Gets a guy out of breath, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. You want to do one more? Two more? How many? How, how deep are we? Hour 15, 17 right now. Hour 17. Let's do two more. Two more. Two more. Make all right. Good. Ah, oh, shit. What because people's do? attention span is finite, you know. There we go. There we go. One ringy dingy. Talk to me. Hello? Talk to me. Hi. Um, my name is John. Um, Are you from New Zealand or Australia? I'm from the UK. You're from the UK? You know, the UK accent is getting more Southern Hemisphere all the time. Is it? Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, I would guess he was barely Australian. understand. When I was over there 25 years ago, everybody kind of had an English accent. Yep. But nowadays, everybody sounds like a fucking New Zealand, yeah. like like Carl. That's yeah. You're gonna piss this guy off real bad, though. No, I'm not calling this him guy, a, calling this, him a New Zealander. Well, I don't know, man. UK. Did you see my post today about the UK? No. Oh, it's pretty scathing. <laughs> Pretty scathing. You poor <laughs> bastards over there. <laughs> it's like they lost World War II. And the Gestapo's running around in the goddamn street. Did you see that picture today? What the are they doing? Standing there. Well, they had a sign on a truck. Yep. Being offensive is an offense. <laughs> right? So you can't say bad things to people anymore. And they had four cops standing in front of the sign. And one of them's got a big old fucking stick. Wow. Like he's going to beat your ass. This is like a public service announcement? Yeah. Or is this in a... Yeah. So no, it was a picture that was taken in front of this truck. Shit, man. Have you seen this... Somebody's uh, police Merseyside or someplace. Police department thinks they're going to beat your ass... For being offensive. For being offensive. Have you Fox. seen this Verbally from offensive. Uh, India? Of those yeah. uh, guys running around beating people that aren't wearing masks? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, it's India. India, yeah. though. They can hang up. No, he's still there. He's, he's still, still there, right? He's still there. Oh, he hung up. We pissed him. I told you you were going to piss him off. <laughs> Call the guy UK. I mean, I'm New Zealand. Man. Wow. All right, dude. All right, man. Can I have to have a little patience with us? <laughs> we got a we, show to do yeah, here. We got it's a show to do. It's not about you guys. It's not about you. It's, about it's us. not about the caller. It's about everybody <laughs> listening, right? It's about entertainment, right? <laughs> you think people hung up on Johnny Carson? No, they didn't. I always compare myself to Johnny Carson. But I don't think he, like, ridiculed everybody that called. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ridicule was, him. I ridiculed his he's fucked worried up about, country. He's worried about this offensive stuff. He's he's right. worried the guy's outside right now about to beat him with a stick. I don't think he hung up. I think he just lost his connection. Maybe. Yeah, That's we'll just say that. What's all this? All right, here we go. All right, let's try it. Yeah. Maybe he's still there. Yellow. Hello, Rippy. Uh, <laughs> this is Simon from Sweden. Simon from Sweden. Are you in Sweden right now? Yes. What time is it? Uh, it's uh, close to midnight. Uh, we're uh, in approaching Friday right now in five minutes. Wow. He stayed up just to listen to you. That is really cool. It's like yeah. he's in the future. That you've indulged us with your, with your contact. Well, what's going on, man? Um, well, everything is good. I've been uh, lifting uh, starting strength for uh, four months now. And, uh, okay. 
I started out as a 170, uh, six foot one, and uh, I went up to 225 in this uh, short period. Well, that's good. You're making pretty good progress, aren't you? Yes, uh, I'm approaching uh, normal hu- human strength, uh, good, 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 which good. I'm very happy about. And I, I've dealt with various pains, uh, and I'm only 22, so I was kind of in a bad uh, But uh, yeah. yeah. You're going to have kids all over Sweden for a <laughs> just like Sam in Atlanta. Fine, young specimen of a man. <laughs> well, what can we do for you today? My main question is about um, stretch marks. Yeah. Uh, since uh, I haven't I haven't really found that much con on uh, the forums or uh, in your videos. Well, you know that's a good question because we haven't discussed stretch marks before. That's this is the first original question we've had. That's in a long yeah. Time. Nobody's ever asked us. The about ones here marks. are pretty typical, right? On the shoulder. Stretch marks <clears throat> in both men and women are ex- 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 there is a highly variable tolerance for for growth under the skin. Some men, some women get stretch marks real bad, and and some of them don't get them at all. You know, they're, they're famous in women during pregnancy, and uh, some women just have, and this is a, it's, I think it's a form of scarring, basically. Uh, men that are susceptible to stretch marks will get them across the top of their pecs and delts. But uh, I've seen them. Uh, on, I've seen them on on hips, butts, and some lifters that have that have that have grown very fast. If you're getting stretch marks, you're just one of these poor bastards that has stretch marks. He says he's getting them on the thighs, which I, which I've never. You're seen. getting them on your thighs. <clears throat> That's weird. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I have. That's not common. That's not very common. And your next question is going to be, what can you do about them? And the the dermatology answer to that is nothing. Uh, there will be people that try to sell you vitamin E preparations that you are supposed to apply topically. They don't work. And. Uh, you know. My mom recommended I smear myself with fucking um, baby oil. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Doesn't help. <laughs> doesn't help. Now, if you want to smear yourself with baby oil to facilitate <laughs> your interactions with Swedish women, that's another thing <laughs> entirely. But I don't think there's a point in, I, I don't think there's a, a, a way to mitigate stretch marks with baby oil. Uh, over time, they'll just get kind of more normal sk- color. Kind of, they and, just kind of you just notice them less. They're always going to be there, but but you hey, always look, you, you have know the when huge we size. were growing up, when we were growing up, we we're kids lifting weights and stuff. We liked stretch marks because they're like battle scars. Right. We thought they were cool. We didn't want them to go away. Yeah, some guy that had gotten big and swole and shit and had stretch marks across his. We all benched a bunch in high school oh, to get the stretch marks. Get stretch marks. Yeah. You wanted those. Yep. You know. Yep. So the bad news is uh, you can't do anything about it. The good news is why would you want to? Right? right. <laughs> Tell, the 22-year-old doesn't give a shit. 22. <laughs> I, you're not supposed to care about stretch marks at 22. A sweet pride, a fair skin, and a lean physique. So, Yeah. But you got uh, huge, I think you're fine. You got huge thighs now. You got huge, huge, huge is better than than skinny and no stretch skinny marks. Skinny and no stretch marks. Huge with stretch marks is is the best thing that could ever happen to a guy. You so you, tell your mom to mind her own business. All right, but but by the same token, tell her I said hello. <laughs> I will show her the video. Thanks for the call. <laughs> Swedish woman. She's probably 45. She's worth, <laughs> worth saying hello to. You know. Everybody will have you. Oh, my God, yes. It's a pretty bunch of people. Listen to the white people saying that okay. Swedish people are... One more <laughs> one more call. Those of you that are hanging on, I'm sorry. but I mean, there's 
People have an attention span, and we've exceeded it already, I'm quite sure. Hello. Hey there, Ripping Crew. How y'all doing down there in Texas? Good. You? I'm getting along. I'm up here in the north. It's not not really the best, but... Where are you? I'm y'all for the next year up there in Ohio now. Oh, God. What's your name? Hi, Dan. Well, uh, man, go ahead. And uh, you're the last caller, you know. Make this good. There's a lot on your shoulders here. I was on hold for an hour, so I was hoping I'm... Yeah, I know. It's a... It's a shitty deal. This, this. Uh. So I'm looking at some uh, questions regarding like the bench press specifically because I have some issues that are starting to interfere with progress and you know in the intermediate range going mm-hmm. forward. So for me, I have a strange condition. I've been trying to Google it. I went to a sports med doctor once, and they, it's hard. There's no real way to replicate the problem without being under you know significant load. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, when I'm doing the bench press, I'm coming out of the bottom and I'm pushing up. The must I'm relatively lean in the in the upper body, so it's easy to see it while it's doing it. And I've recorded myself to verify that I'm not like making it up. But my left forearm seems to have like I don't know if the muscle spasm or some kind of twitch up or the bottom and if I go with like a 5RM it'll start hitting right about the 4th if I go with let's say a 20RM it'll start hitting around the 14th so it seems to be like a fatigue based thing but if I take time off or you know deload or anything like that it doesn't go away once i get to well, a point it, where this significant like high load I, all right but, but you you hadn't described the situation you said when it talked about onset but what does it do well if you look at my if you were to look at my arm as i'm holding the bar like the actual forearm muscles kind of like they look like they're it's a twitch like i don't know doing like the wave or something it's like it feels like a muscle spasm or some kind of like uh is it impairing your ability to grip the bar it does not impair my ability to grip the bar. It goes from when it onsets originally, it's kind of like just an unusual feeling. If I keep pushing through it, though, it gets to the point of where it's it's causing that distracts me from being able to drive through uh, to complete lifts I know I should be able to do. Right. Like just yesterday, I was doing a press, and I was on rep 7. I was trying to do 10, and it hit me. Uh, this is like the fourth set of, of five. And it hit me and I actually had to rack it because I thought I was going to drop it. Well, uh, given that I can't see what the hell's going on and given that you went to a sports medicine doctor, which means anti-inflammatories for running. Uh, and he didn't know what the hell's going on either because they don't know anything about this kind of shit. Uh, my first observation is, is there, you have probably got some weird ass, neurological situation that's idiopathic to you and i think everything you've told me is that you're doing too many reps in your training if you know these things come up at the fatigue end of a set then don't do high reps which you're not supposed to do on this program anyway why would you do a 20 rm on anything you know And you're doing sets of five, and you said something about the seventh rep. A set of five is five reps. It's not seven reps. It's five reps. Uh, It doesn't sound to me like you're doing the program. Now, what this what I'm speaking of right now is like experimenting with it to try and figure it out. I I wasn't able to get. And without me being there, I don't know if it's not a cramp. It may not be treatable. There are people, I've trained with people before Cardell was real bad about this. Anytime the weight got heavy, and it doesn't matter if it was a bench, press, squat, deadlift, he would shake during the during the set. He'd shake real bad and he couldn't control it. Now, this probably had something to do with the recreational drugs that Cardell <laughs> was taking. But, but... Uh, there wasn't anything he could do about it at all. He just could not control the tremor. And this may be something that you've got, and I don't know. This is one of these deals where doctors don't know about this shit. 
Yeah, you're lost your mind if you went to a doctor about this. You're expecting him to actually be able to analyze a physiologic situation and come up with a that, that's not what doctors do. Doctors don't do that. If you uh, anybody that would be able to diagnose quote unquote something like this is going to be a, a a muscle physiologist, and those guys aren't in private practice. You know, so, uh, but just to back up, if this happens at real high reps and it's becoming a problem, then you're just going to have to not do high reps. That's the practical way to address this is that you're not, you're not doing the program. And if it was me and I was coaching you, I would say that the first rep that this you experienced an onset of this phenomenon, that would be one rep too many. Have you ever had it happen during a heavy, heavy set of three? Yeah. So like the third rep of a heavy set of three, the same same phenomena you would experience. It doesn't, so it's kind of hard to describe it exactly in that context, but mm-hmm. the heavier loading, because the sets go by much faster, by the time it would have, I, I would guess time, by the time it would have time to start really becoming a major problem, I'm already basically probably grinding out the last of three. Mm-hmm. Um, if I do fives, for example, it'll show up on three. I'll be able to push through three and four, and then when I start to lower five, I'll either know immediately if I'm going to be able to push five up out of the bottom or not. And it's not because, for example, the right side couldn't do it. And it doesn't feel like the left side couldn't do it either. It just, it, that sensation when I'm pushing up from that side, it just feels like that arm just decided, nope. Didn't understand this. Is this bilateral? Is this both sides? It's just one side. Or just one side. Just the left. Have you injured your left arm in any way? I haven't injured my left forearm, which is the muscle that's causing it. I have haven't you injured, injured your left shoulder? Probably 20 years ago. What did you do 20 years ago? I was in the military, and uh, I fell off of a rather high uh, platform and landed on that shoulder, there and I go. was dislocated. Yeah. There you go. Then I, I tell you, probably you're dealing with a neurological issue uh, coming out of your brachial plexus on that side. Uh, how old are you now? Uh, 35. Well, I, I tell you what, there may be absolutely nothing you can do about this. It, it, it seems to be related to that shoulder injury. That's the most plausible explanation. Well, so what, what I, th- what I think you should do is, uh, just limit your reps because there, there's not anything you're going to be able to do about this. If in fact that injury is a result of, um, I mean, this, this phenomenon is a result of an injury to the brachial plexus there in your shoulder. Since you landed on it, there's a the explanation for some nerve damage and I you know, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you to do. I I would tell you to start keeping track of your reps more carefully. And if this thing is is it getting worse or or, or better or staying the same? Has it been constant for how long? How many years? That's why I've been doing the different rep ranges and, and intensity targets with to see kind of how it evolves because at this point, I've gotten significantly stronger since I started doing the program up until the point of where I wasn't able to do sets of five that I knew I would have, I, like I felt like I have this, and then that arm just is, you know, not doing its, not carrying its load, so to uh-huh. speak, figuratively and literally. And then at that point, I'm like, okay, does it need a deload? Is it over? Don't don't deload it. Are you so it's it's just tracking along with your strength. So as you get yeah. stronger, it it just That's tracks right. along with it. So the way you're going to do this is uh, stay with your sets of five. But you what you need to manage is intra set fatigue. So if you've got a set of five that you're supposed to do today, before it gets to that point, let's say you do two reps and you think okay, it's going to start doing this thing on the next rep. Rack it. Wait thirty seconds unrack the bar, do another rep, do a second rep. Mm-hmm. And if nothing happens, rack the bar, wait 30 seconds, 
rack, unrack it, and then do your last set, and then that's your set of five. You're just going to break up the set of five. So that way you can keep loading and keep the volume the same and minimize the number of variables that you're dealing with and figure out what the hell is actually going on. If you're jumping around doing a single here, a triple here, a set of 20 here, you're never going right. to get to the you're, bottom of this. And it's got to, you know, if it's just tracking along with your strength acquisition, uh, the simplest way is just manage it within the set. Manage Don't, it within the set. In right. other words, the set of five in your particular situation can be a set of three and two singles. Right. Right. Now, does this bother you when you squat and deadlift? I can deadlift three plates a side or higher with absolutely no – There's, I don't notice this anywhere else, even with forearm things such as, like, uh, chin-ups or pull-ups. There, this never bothers me except for the bench. Well, i tell you what. Uh, in other words, you, you don't feel this on the overhead press either. No. Well, you know, I this is – this is position specific to that injured shoulder is what it sounds like to me. And uh, I think the best way to do is just manage it. It seems to be going use. It, it goes up, you know, and is tracking with your strength as it increases. I think you got a neuro problem in that shoulder and you're just going to have to manage it that way. Uh, but if you're only deadlifting 315, you're, you're still, you know, in the growing phases of the novice expression of this thing at the age of 35. So uh, that's what I would do. I think Nick's right on the money with, with that. You manage it within the set. Okay. Do you think there's any implications or, or anything like that for breaking this up like that, like long-term? No. I, but you, we won't know until you've been you training long term. Yeah, you got to try it. Just yep. Run it and see what happens. Just run it and see what happens. That was one of the things the therapist mentioned for trying to do it was to try and just do basically everything I wanted to do just with longer breaks and rest in between. But he said that that would not be training the same sports element I was looking for. So he told me to, uh, you know, basically do whatever I was given to do or told to do. And just, you know, if I can't do it, then it's, I'd have to give up on that modality. No, nah, that's bullshit. You can disregard everything he said. <laughs> everything that, everything that he said, he's he doesn't know what the fuck you're talking about. So I, if if it was uh, if I were you, that's that's what I would do. I would I would train my other lifts normally, and then on the bench press, I would I would just learn when to take thirty seconds between the third and fourth rep, and learn when to take thirty seconds between the fourth and the fifth rep of a set of five. Yep. And that's just the way you'll be doing your bench press sets. And really, it's the bench press. It's not the end of the fucking world right. anyway. So right. just do it like that. All right. Thanks for the call. Well. Much better this time. That was actually a really good episode. Was it? Well, it's well, not it's over good. with yet. Oh, well, we're done with the callers, right? We're Unless... done with the callers. But the episode. The episode continues. Continues until I say fucking it's over. rusty. I, w- I say I was just commenting those. on the uh, quality you know of the callers. I was because I'm in charge. Dogma, dogma, dogma. Like an assistant principal. Yeah, yeah. I remember Coach Jetter. Oh, that was the assistant principal. Yeah. He was the assistant. Why was he coach? Was he like the football coach? The too? Assistant principals were always coaches. <laughs> That's true, actually. Yeah, that's where they all yeah. come. I from. think I think mine was like a tennis coach or some shit. Uh, Jeter was a good guy. He was just he couldn't help himself. He right, ex football coach. He's a good man though. He just had that football coach yeah. because I said so. That's why. And what I say is what we're. Why does do. the assistant principal get all the disciplinary stuff? Is that's that what he's for? Because the uh, real principal doesn't want to. Deal with it, or real principal doesn't want to soil his hands with yeah, yeah. Real now, but in junior high they do. Yeah, in junior high the real principal gives licks, but in in high school <laughs> gives licks. <laughs> they're nothing but politicians in high school. It, yeah, in in high school the the principal the are? principal's a politician. Yeah, yeah, that's all they are. He's got an education, ED or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Erectile dysfunction. It, no, EDD. Oh, oh. <laughs> doctor, like Dr. Jill Biden. She's a doctor, you know. <laughs> Dr. Jill Biden. I don't know how we got off onto that, but 
It yeah. was because of I said right. so. Right. So I think it's time that the episode is over. It's a great idea, right? Because I said so. Great idea. It's a great right? idea, man. So we'll see you next Friday on Starting Strength Radio because I said so. <laughs> <laughs>